Here we go. This is Flash in the Dork Table with a special guest hostage this week. I managed to dig somebody up. Want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> that is my special well, hostage of the week, Graham Z. And she's very high. <laughs> no, um, she, no, she's well, not. Well, yeah. I'm sitting in a high chair. Does that count? Okay, it's not wearing, really high, but it's on the highest setting. <laughs> if you're wearing your Eeyore suit, it would be. No, I'm not, actually. Okay, well. Because it's Grimm's, a onesie, and it makes it rather difficult to see, go to the bathroom. It comes up in a perfect <laughs> world after the dark town. I don't get that. It, maybe Grim needs to look at my stuff on the uh, that share viewer thing after oh, the show for oh. a minute. Because it does it's well, changed now, live dork table, but it still says, uh, oh, the real, okay, I get it. Duh. Have to read it. Anyway, the dork anyway. table is open. Welcome doink, to the doink, dork doink, table. Doink. And you want to, want to say hi to the bots and bodies this week? Give them a The treat. bots and bodies? Yeah, and the real liberty com, where Grimner has the things set up from. Eh, eh, eh. Yeah, yeah. Good. Oh my goodness, there's lots of people in there today. Yeah. Um, Barman is right up top. Hey, Miss Van Meter. Um, closely followed by Grimner, who is the RLM God, don't you know? And he sets everybody up, and thank God for that. <laughs> Grimner is the big G God <laughs> in the RLM. Uh, we also got Moose Goyle. Moose hey, Goyle Moose is Goyle. here. Muzzy. Asmo is here, as well as Chalcedoni. Yours truly is here as well. Well, it says Graham Z, but that's me. <laughs> <Graham laughs> I be Don C. Yeah, I'm uh, yeah. A to Z. Uh, got double dose of I be Don C going on as well as Java, 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 Doctor, Java, 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 and I'm drinking some Java. I made some Ooh. coffee before the show. Sure. Uh, Jay Dread is here. Hansel, hi Hansel. As well as Meisterbauer, who said that he got a lot of strength for a big guy. Well, that's awesome, hun. Woody. Um, yes, that's right, then and well. I am getting flashed. Whee! <laughs> uh, it's not too warm for footy jammies out here, Van Meter. It's it's downright chilly out here. I'm going to just... I'm flashed. Let's see, what, let's see if Barman will tell us. Oh, I just got flashed. <laughs> That okay. was the point of that. Come on, nonsense. barman or whoever. Nobody's paying. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's 32.4 degrees Fahrenheit out here right wow. now. Yeah. Well, I'd give you 20% off of 78 degrees for $5,000. Wow, that's a bargain at any price. <laughs> did you mark that up 30% before you did that? 36. In any case, yeah. 36. Oh, I see how you are. Ponder Gander is here as well as the lovely good. rain. Um, Vanna White. Vanna White is here. Yeah. She's, she's tying in ladders. Vanna White. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Don't know what that was. <laughs> wow. Vinny Help, is also here. <laughs> The um, W4DKV. We got a weather doik here, too. Um, yeah, that's what I read. Yeah, as well as Z, Beth Z, and we got a fandom in the chat. <laughs> I also see Cycles is here. Hi, Cycles. Yeah, she's over and, crocheting on the couch. She's crotcheting? Yep. Yeah, I left I left my knitting over on the couch. Damn it. Oh, well, that means I'll just have to pay just, attention, won't I? Or just get up and go get it, and I'll finish what you're doing. I got a short leash. Nah, it's okay, because I also got a Bubba right here Ooh. in my lap, and he's wanting some scratchings. Because <laughs> it's very, very cold outside, and so even Bubba first come in. problems, I'm telling you. I know. I know. Okay, where'd you leave Life off? Uh, where'd I leave off? Let's see. Uh, Colfax 101 is here, as well as yeah. Cyborg Noodle. May you be touched by the noodly goodness of a cyborg. Ew. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's gross. You thought um, of it. Wasn't I know. my idea, but I want the video rights to that shit. <laughs> I also see Dakota. 
and the dork cakes is here. Hi, hey, cakes. Mental. Greetings and salutations. Flash, somebody is also here as well as from somebody got from. That's kind of <laughs> I'm I'm in jammers today, but I'm not in my Eeyore jammers today. Um, <laughs> I'm Never in two-piece jammers because it's easier to go to the bathroom. <laughs> well, as if everybody we, needed to know that. We were. I shared. We anyway. were due for an update on your peeing situation, Miss Mary, <laughs> here at the dork table where those things matter. <laughs> well, I got accused of having gas earlier, and I I have to say uh, there have been no sharts. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome back, <laughs> yeah. Dork. <laughs> yeah, it's so, dorky time. I, um, I also see Gromit is here, as Gromit. well as JJ's. Um, let's see, Kozu and Karl Marx. Karl Marx is kind of a snarky little bot, isn't he? Snarky bot. A snarky bot. That's That sounds almost kinky. Hi, Kiss. Is Kiss a bot, too? Everybody's a bot. <laughs> don't Don't get excited. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can be a bot, too. You can identify as a fucking toaster if you want to. It's a dork I'm table. a bot. You're a bot. No He's a bot. Here. She's a bot. Wouldn't you like to be a bot, To Be a bot. Okay. Wow. Be a bot. <laughs> wonder where that This is from. what happens when I have others to play with. Pent up um, frustration, Miss Mary? <laughs> yeah, a little too much copy. Are you snowbound again? What the Going on. What the fly and you know what? Um, how do you, how do you do a fly and you know what? Sideways, <laughs> if you got any luck. Wow, is that what ceiling fans are for? Moving I along. I, I, <laughs> depends on how much you weigh. <laughs> hey there, pom 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 sauce and sock puppet, <laughs> as well as. Sulemol, you know that sounds like that that uh, Neil Diamond song. Sulemol, su sulemol, sule <laughs> sule. Oh, I'm so getting old. It sounds <laughs> like wow. My my cat. I know cats, it's a good thing I don't have the camera going because I was dancing, I was grooving. My cat won't stop moving his head around every time you sing. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps looking around. But what's that? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for him to join in to be a two part harmony. Oh, sweet. <laughs> I also see Tech Man is here, and I just might need one of them. You never know. And Then and Will is also here, as well as Uno. And to round out the awesome crew over here in our aluminum and um land is the lovely Van Meter. Ta da! <laughs> hey, and in eight minutes, hot diggity dog. I know. Remember, I used to tie you up and drag that out for almost an hour. Well, I think the longest was 21 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying hi to the bots and the bodies. Because at yep. the dork table, we have no rhyme, no reason, no direction, no goals. We don't. But even... sometimes Grams breaks out into song and people go, what yeah. the hell is that noise? But we don't <clears> even <throat> beg people for money. You know, like at the end, they always say, hey, send me a couple of bucks for a pizza or... You know, yeah, follow me gas. on Patreon and donate. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and this stuff of, this is episode yada, yada, yada. Well, guess what? This is episode, I don't really give a flying. Oh, can I title it? <laughs> Go right That'll ahead. That'll be the title. I don't give a flying dot, dot, dot. Don't Fill want to be too blank. descriptive. Well, people are sensitive, Miss Mary. They're, they're all about words now. I remember mm. when words would make people laugh. Now it makes them shit their pants and call 999 for police protection. Oh, I need the popo up and off ended. Oh, yeah, does that it. mean you actually got your head out of your ass now? Oh, did I say wow. that out loud? Wow. <laughs> I didn't call the cops. No, 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 no. We don't call cops at Flashco. At Flashco, we deal with our problems the old-fashioned way. We overrule everything everybody else says, and I'm the boss, so fuck off. You're the boss, applesauce. Yes. I have spoken! That's how I'd run my world. If I was in charge of the world, 
first thing I would do is say, it's on you, fuckers. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Thanks for the dough. I'm going to go be smoking in this room over here watching old movies. <laughs> Later. <laughs> well, that's what I think the problem is, is. We're all so controlled we can't do anything. You do anything. Nine other people are calling you names because you can't do that. I mean, what? You know, that actually popped into my head when I was in the thinking room earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> wow. If you can't you know, do why... it in the thinking room, what room did you want to do it in? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But... <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a scary thought. Okay, so you're getting... <laughs> Look, you were setting well, the stage for a dirty joke, so I figured I'd. No, it. I wasn't. I was just, right. I was just, you know, in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, was, there. I was in there cogitating and constipating. <laughs> That's stuff. That stuff we do alone on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> just because we're dorks, but you know, it was one of those. That's the problem with the world these days. Is nobody, not nobody, but you know, so many people are so used to, well. It's someone else's job, not my job. It's yeah. your responsibility. You know what? If it tr directly affects you, maybe, just maybe, it's your responsibility. Hmm. Well, it's a I know. That's a tricky spot in life to, to judge for others. So how do you do that? <laughs> how, do you, um, how do you explain to a, another person that you think they should be like you? No, I don't want to be like you. I want to be like no, the group because the group I don't, has all I don't power. want anybody to be like me because then I wouldn't be unique. You know, you know how you. That's the point. You, uh, no, no, no. Wait, you're you're going the wrong way. Look, I was what I was saying. If you try to encourage others to be individual, they refuse mm -hmm. because there's no support for the individual. They want to be a part of a group that will protect them from. Oh, evil. that's right. Yes. And yes. it can come in a lot of ways. Church, government, uh, arms. Somebody arms up to the nipples, has a lot of ammo. They're terrified. Group, group. Can you imagine how afraid of life you'd have to be to do that? That's what Wow, I'm that's sad. Because, I mean, if the world blows up tomorrow, fuck, it was nice knowing all you guys. What, what am I going to do about it? So... I figure if I get attacked by some rogue government and I end up dead, well, I'm not going to know it. I'm going to be dead. And if I'm going to be <laughs> fighting, right, you're fighting all mm -hmm. these people that want to take your shit away. How long does that go on? I mean, what, you're just going to fight them for 10 minutes and then it's over? No. They're going to take I'm not going to fight shit. anybody, but did you know that Grimm said that it's not my yob, bang? And I'm thinking, Whoa. don't bang my yob. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But see, we live in the con constant madness of war, threat of war. Oh, yeah. It's like, you know, I'm going to tell. You know well, what we used to do you know, when I had siblings that would say that? And I, well, first we would pummel them, and then we'd pay them a nickel <laughs> not to do it again. And then they would go and tell anyway. <laughs> so they wound up being on the winning end just because... Yeah, they got a couple of bruises, but they also got a nickel out of the deal. And they got to watch the rest of us get our butts whooped. So, well, yeah. my, you want to hear my comparison? My father had a cure for snitches. What was that? Whoever snitches is the one that gets it twice as bad as the one that broke the rule. Dude. Dude. So, yeah. So if my brother would have snitched me off and I'd have got twice as much for the problem i would have got him back for it <laughs> he knew that for 15 or so years that was a, <laughs> that was a golden rule don't fuck with me i'm smarter than you are and then he figured out how to use his strength against me and i kind of you know kind of fell apart damn he it was, yeah he got physically tougher so i couldn't beat him up anymore Ah. But as far as the snitching each other off, not for the world, not to this day. No, 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 no. You don't. You don't do that. See, and and the brother just younger than me was very good at ratting everybody out. Wow. And and it was, you know, it was one of those things. I'm telling, I'm telling. So somebody would always give him a nickel. Of course, back in the day, a nickel was you could buy a candy bar with a nickel. 
But um, I know I'm really freaking old. But, you know, he would get that nickel and then he would go rat us out anyway. And you know what? The little SOB <laughs> saved all them nickels. <laughs> he's he's the one with all the money. Damn it. Wow. And it's our money. I need to go hit him up for at least two nickels that I paid him. See? There you go. <laughs> I want mine. Gimme, 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 gimme. But you know what? Bye. Those nickels were worth it. Yeah. Because one of them was because he wouldn't get my sister and I had bunk beds and I had the top bunk because I was the older one and he wouldn't get off of my bunk bed so I put my baby sister on his head and she peed on his head. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And then I paid him a nickel not to tell and Isn't... he told anyway, but it was so worth yeah, it. <laughs> that's some kind of mental abuse now. I mean, you'd probably get five to life for that. Probably would. What are you in for? Oh, I pissed on my brother's head. <laughs> when you getting out, never. <laughs> wow. Well, that's what the world's coming to is they want to make yeah. every bad thing now as a it's a mental disorder. Same. Oh, I know. The trap is so clever too and the Jews are just doing shit behind your back that you're going to get this big surprise and they what happened? Haven't you been paying attention for the last 150 years? <laughs> we told you it was coming. <laughs> but no. Well, and people just need to realize you need to get the hyphenization out of like African American or whatever, whatever, and put it in some of these words like disorder and dis ease. <laughs> American disorder? <laughs> well, America is a disorder as well as yes, it any is. fucking. It is a disorder. As yes. well as any fucking country on this planet. They're run by a bunch of psychopaths that don't know their ass from their elbow. No, but by golly, they're having a good time jerking the rest of us around. And so, well, we I'm going to laugh at them. Well, yeah, but we read about all the violence and the horror that actually happens somewhere else. So we don't have to do it. Yeah. That's why I had to have a sip of coffee. <laughs> We both sipped at the same time. We're <laughs> synchronized sippers. <laughs> when you and now dinners, on the dork table, synchronized sipping. Synchronized <laughs> chatting. <laughs> we both talk at the same time about two different things. <laughs> it's called the dork table oh. for a reason. Anyway. Grim said every bad thing is now mental pancake. <laughs> I think every bit of new sewage in the mainstream media is a nothing burger. So there you go. So is there going to be a vote and a test and grades given out to see who does best and all that shit? Does best at what? It. It? It. Ooh. I have spoken. I can spell it. Does that count? <laughs> covers a lot of stuff for such a little word, doesn't it? I know. It's IT. Yeah. <laughs> and I I know people that work in IT. They work in it. <laughs> oh, you know people. You know what? People what? suck. You know that? Some of them do. <sighs> Some of them blow. I'm telling you. Yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> you take the good with the bad in life and you get along. That's just the way it is. You it, just rearrange the voyage and it all works out. Well did you did you watch that link that I sent you or listen to it in the background or something? Actually no, voyage. I totally like spazzed it off until I opened up wire today and it's Ooh. like Oh sunny beaches in California. That's a very well it's it's hard to explain. I didn't enjoy the knowledge, but I was glad to be offered the knowledge of that link because okay. I believe that what that link is telling you is happening and people are lied to about what's really happening Then what they get. The results they get should show them the truth, but they, they watch Trump go to whatever Jew land and suck on the wall wearing a Yamaha and everything. <laughs> I mean, doesn't doesn't anybody? A Yamaha. Yeah, well, so you know, that's what that noise the, is. He's having brain farts. Okay. That, yeah, he puts that little rabbi Jewish whatever beanie thing on his head, like some kind of <laughs> moron, 
And then I think I think they should have a propeller on top of those things. Right. This, this is so ridiculous. Then the the leader of the whatever country of the freaking world looks like a complete dick to me because he's wearing another religion's bullshit and going to the Wailing Wall to impress people on how you know diverse he is. What? How understanding. You know, it's called a wailing wall for a reason. It's called a slave. He's as much a slave as we are. Fucking Trump. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine yeah. being forced to do something like that? I don't think I could, would be all right with it. I think I'd quit the job that night. Go, no, get somebody else. This is ridiculous. Yeah, you mean I have to kiss what? Uh, no. It's, it's in the symbolism no. there, little girl. Ah, ha, ha. Kiss, kiss. I know. Save oh, yeah. your soul. Yeah. Run yeah, away. Well, run away. Well, I'll tell you, though, in that link that I sent you is this uh, performance chew, I would suppose. One of the real extreme ones that believes the rest of us are just, you know, footwear for her because speaking of us makes her wretch. <laughs> oh, well, darling, okay, honey. Well, 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 yeah, bullshit and all that, but these people mm-hmm. exist. And in their, oh, I know. In their mind, they're as racist as, you know, the white guy and the nigger that can't live next door because I'm John Smith and I hate me a nigger. One of those guys, and the niggers, ah, yeah. you can't trust Whitey. Whitey will fuck you every time. So the game's set. We're we're just watching it out. <laughs> it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. Well, how did... Miss Kate joined. Ooh, hey. Miss Kate on a dork table Saturday. How nice. I will say hey in the chat. Uh, but... How seriously would you take that, I guess? Well, what was I trying to get at in the first place? Um, what, what deep, intelligent questions do I have for Miss Mary at the Dork Table Podcast? Intelligent? <laughs> mm. those, are, those are so smart that they're huge. They're bigger than hu- whatever's after huge. Intelligent. <laughs> oh, it's a new word. I, I thought just made it up. Was yeah. after huge. Mm-hmm. I figure if the, if the government can rewrite the language, I'm going to have a shot at it too. I and I'm not oh, even going to charge anybody for it. I'm just going to do it for free because I care. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, it's fun. It's fun. I know it is. Oh, you know I what like else? Rewriting is, language. What else is fun is when I hit enter after I type something. About five minutes later. <laughs> oh. Because <laughs> I'm talking on the radio and I forget. There's two components to typing in chat. One is the shit you say, and the next part was when you say it by typing and yeah. entering. And and I have this tendency to, I'll see something and I'll start writing and then I'll get distracted. Squirrel. Yeah. And... And then I come back, and it was such a wonderful, poignant quote that I wanted to put out there, but yeah. now it makes absolutely no sense, yeah. and so I delete it all. <laughs> I don't. I don't think anything in this point in my life makes any sense anymore. It's all chaotic happenstance garbage. Ooh, Miss Kate is happens. late. She's yeah. late for a very important date. She no time that. to say. Oh hello. wait. Oh, yeah. I, I thought. Got late. No, she was saying she's late catching us on I know. the patio. Like, I know. Hey. I know. So you know what? I think we're gonna have to do. What? We're, we're gonna have to boycott the government. Sweet. How do you? Okay. How does one boycott a government? I don't think. I don't know because they're everywhere. I think see, that's what I mean. Is we're so trapped, uh, you know, in so many different ways that. Nobody can find the time. <laughs> I don't have the time right now. I'm busy being a rebel. <laughs> what? Yeah. You get well, the point, right? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Because I really am a rebel. I do not. You know what I don't do? What do you, what do you don't do? I don't go out and drink coffee in public. You know why? <gasps> Why? Are you a coffeeist? No. When you drink coffee in public, 
You're supporting uh-huh. the terrorists. Really? Yep. Hmm. Didn't you is hear that me say because it? all what? coffee Are you is calling me a liar? <laughs> no. Is that because all coffee is actually Arabica coffee because coffee came from the Middle East and <laughs> and I got this story the other night when I went out uh, to supper with some friends and he was explaining to me how the original coffee started out in Arabia and a king had this special and he gave um, this plant to the French king. Maybe he was a sultan since he was in like the Arabic area. In any case, he gave the plant to a French king and then someone stole a clipping from that coffee plant. And then the king said, off with his head. And he hauled ass to South America and planted it in um, Colombia. And that's why you have coffee in South America because it's all Arabica. And I went, okay, all right. Well, that's no stranger okay. than the story of Cristobal Columbus. Oh, I know. The feller He's that, looking for uh, India. No, he wasn't. He found. He wasn't looking for anything. He found what he was looking for. Victims. Yes. Plunders. Well, it's like what was that I heard the other day? Uh, one of one of my alternate, you know, fake history videos that I've been off on a tangent on lately, hmm. and he. The gentleman was saying, stop and think about this logistics wise. The Aztecs or the Incas or whichever, I think it was the Aztecs he was talking about. And he said, stop and think about they had millions of people. And yet Cortez and his 500 took them out. Well, because even when you take into consideration the disease that was brought over, which, yeah, they they were a dis-ease that invaded the continent, but... Yeah, no, no, they brought illness that wasn't on yeah. their home country when they started living there. They I understand that, that, but 500 no people taking out millions? Well, there probably weren't millions in the first place. That's probably an exaggeration by the writers. It still makes you stop and think, this is a bullshit story. Well, I'm thinking no, this no, is a bullshit story. You know that he came over and conquered. Well, he did. Conquered the savages. Well, he uh, did. And he stole all their freaking wealth. And that's the fucking money that the Europeans used to do the shit they did after that. They kept coming back. They took the whole United States. That wasn't United States when the English and the Germans and the French and all those other fuckers found it. Oh, no. It was just another big piece of land that, hey, we have things that go boom, and you only have things that you throw, and so therefore we're going to take your stuff. Well, right, but the sad part is there's so much land, but all these governments want to claim it's theirs. So they put up signs and get people to wear guns and badges and stop you from using it. Why? Because it belongs to the government. Why? What the? What did we get into? How did we ever get into a a living situation like like the one we're in, with no opt out? It's not freedom in any way. They just say that a lot. It's a bunch of fucking rules, and if you don't follow them, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, you're free to follow those rules, or you're free or to else. suffer the consequences. That's about yeah, as free as well, you're going to get to be. Okay, so here or America or Russia or Cuba or wherever. It's all the same bullshit. As long as you got enforcement protecting a government from you, then who's the government for? (laughs) What are you, a bunch of lunatics? Yeah. Tell you, go try trespassing on Trump Tower sometime. You think you're a big shot. Go there with no reason to be there and see how long that takes them to get rid of you before they (laughs) get rid of you. (laughs) It's not really two choices to that. I think that's what's happening in Nebraska right now. Of course, I okay. let me put let me snug my my little tinfoil hat down real good. Right. Nebraska is just being inundated. Bless their hearts, those poor people up there, with the rain and the snow and the melt and the and I know a few people that yeah they've lost everything with the floods and I mean the chunks of ice that took out sections of barn or whatever it's just and just laying there in their yard it's it's horrendous what they're going through but this is the whole freaking state and when you stop and realize that 
that Nebraska has a lot of dairy, a lot of beef. They grow a lot of corn, which is, yeah, GMO, but they still grow an awful lot of corn, which is this. I think this is to manipulate the market prices. They grow a lot of wheat, all, actually a lot of, a lot of grain, period. But to me, you know, when you have that much flooding, and it's damn near the whole state, you have that much flooding, the soil is not going to be able to use as planting anything for at least a couple of years. Guess what's going to happen? Government's going to step in. They're going to say, oh, hey, guess what? We will give you these government loans. We will do this. We will do that. People will not read the fine print like on the, the CRP land that, you know, they, oh, the government pays me to not grow anything. The government pays me to not break out this natural grassland. And they don't read the fine print on the bottom that says, Anytime during this time period, if we deem it necessary, we can seize this land and consider it paid in full for what we have given you so far. That's what's going on in Nebraska right now, I think. They started a freaking weather war, and as soon as people start going to the government for assistance, they're going to wind up losing everything as if they haven't already. And then they're going to sell it to some big corporate geek that's going to, I mean, it's just, this is a land grab. I see it as, and that's just me as someone that is just South of Nebraska. Mm. I see this shit going on and I think you bastards. I noticed. You, it I, irritates me. Should I wake up my wife and ask her to protect me from you? No. Cause remember no. you're the hostage, not me. Be nice. I know. Well, I am being nice to you, but those bastards. Whoever has the buttons on the weather toys, cut well, it out. But you do realize that when you tell people boycott, you know, use your money to influence these corporations, and they don't listen. No. Because they're so addicted to this shit they're addicted to, they can't, they can't think of a way to to starve the that company how do you do it because every move you make fuels it somewhere else you know if you don't well, buy cokes well you have to drink something what are you going to get and then if you're planning ahead that means that the money you were going to spend in the future you're spending it now to stop them from making a profit so the, it, it's rigged yeah you can't. Well, win. there's only ten companies that own everything anyway, so. Well, right. And then the the mom and pop stuffs just getting gobbled up. Yeah. Now it's still and that's on here. purpose as well. It's still alive in where I'm at. They got little off the wall um, like curio places, not curio in general, but like a yarn store where the guy makes jewelry and out of rocks. He's a rock hound, like Woody, a rock hound. Where they go out and they get dirty looking for this shit, and <laughs> they know everything about rocks. Cool, right? But it's you know it wouldn't it probably wouldn't uh, survive in a big city. But the local population, these people are simpler, so they <laughs> use these things that are available in town. Yeah, but the kids all yeah. have cell phones. Most of the most of the people. If you're over, a, I guess, 10 or 12, right in there, most of those mm -hmm. people are plugged in, tuned in, carded. They have, you know, their, for their safety, their protection, their convenience. My wife does. Yeah. It. It's all I'm not getting you. chipped, but I'll carry this little phone around that's it, got yeah. a chip in it. See? It, and, well, Cirque's not dumb. She knows. I just can't tease her about it because then she gets mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was. And then she doesn't bring you your wonderful coffee. No, I know. no, no. She doesn't punish me for being mean. It wouldn't be like that. It would just be me and being mean for no fucking reason when you were asked not to do that. Don't do this. And then if this yeah. is the only thing that you do out of all the things that are possible, you pick the one thing you're asked not to. Wow, that's. Hmm. That's grounds for a pop in the freaking eye if it happens to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm not a nice, loving, warm person as far as, hey, you know, I asked you not to, like the Chloe thing. The difference between me and Chloe is when I was asked to cool it, at the time I was asked to cool it, it was, you know, that's now. <laughs> so I did. Yeah. But I got the I got the message, you know, the unwritten rule was, okay, now you've been warned. Don't make a habit of this. <laughs> yeah. That's all. Yeah. Use, a, you know, use your own ability to think, to figure this out. It's not difficult, Bobo. <laughs> It's a personal responsibility kind of thing. Nobody can do it for you. You have to figure it out on your own. Right. But and that, well, see, that part's not appealing to the general public anymore. They want instant everything. Make it for me. I don't want to do it. You do it. Not my job, man. See, then, then nobody does it. Everybody whines about how nothing gets done. (laughs) And then they go, (laughs) let's have government because they'll do it. The government will do it. The government will do anything. I mean, you know, from working in the auto industry, you know what the shitty fucking car industry did to the car so that they were taking away your ability to fix your own machine. Because people used to. Yeah, and planned obsolescence as well. Right, but they used to repair their own machines at home or friends or whatever. And then they Mm -hmm. started making the car so that it couldn't be done without special tools. (laughs) Yeah. Putting parts of the car that used to be able to reach right, lift the hood and there was a spark plug right there. Now they got them underneath the car where you, (laughs) how are you supposed to get to that? Right? If you don't have a shop. Or it's a no longer independently serviceable part, and therefore you have to buy the full component. So instead of buying a $5 part, you have to buy a $1,000 part and then pay them to put it in and all because this, it's got to be reprogrammed. Right, and all this is okay with the public. The public Well, yeah, because the they want the latest, or... greatest, newest, bestest, shiniest thing. Right. Now, the, the public, according to the story, bailed out the banks – you know the government i heard Mm -hmm. the okay i heard music in the background anyway yeah that was my phone i was getting a text oh that's a very strange song to listen to Uh, does it match your hair (laughs) i don't know does anything match your hair (laughs) i have some clothes that matches my hair (laughs) can you stop making up stuff mary that's not funny (laughs) Uh huh. <laughs> I saw the back of your head, dear, and there's no color to define it. <laughs> there is. You don't. It use... is teal and purple. See, if you can't do it in one word, it can't be done. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> You're just pretending. Uh, uh, uh. I'm on it, you, little missy. It makes my silver stand out much better. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So. Uh, so how do you life life without your medication? <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's the rest of the world that has issues. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got bad news for you. You ain't gonna like this. Uh oh. There is no rest of the world. This is this is the rest. This is it. Whatever you're in, that's it. There you go. There's your world. <laughs> Very simple. I don't know why people make such a big problem out of it. You know, where you're at, that's where you are. Huh? Yeah. Did, you, now you're going all buckaroo bonsai on me. Did you know I was so wise? <laughs> yes, I did, because I've done a dark table with you where, before. Where you're, well, I mean, it's not like a math equation. Where are you? Where you're at. Why does I'm it, here. Okay, so why does where you're at have to be given a title, an identifier? Oh, look at that woman get so many important calls. Ooh. I know. Ah. I'll, I just answered her back because I have a pair of shoes that they're just a little bit too big, and she wears <clears throat> a half Ooh. size bigger than me, so I'm sending them to her. You're networking. You're using yes, I am. your network components. Well, that's what people need to do. You know, if you yep. need information, what's the difference between information and a like a porch? Moose needs a porch. 
right? Okay. Well, the society that I came out of, I found in local bars were usually guys that had uh, labor-related work. Oh, yeah. You know, roofers, tile setters, carpenters, and they were usually juicers, or they had a you know, little smoky toky, and they hang at the bar. So I made a kind of a network out of that whenever I could. So when people needed house problems fixed, hey, I know a guy that'll do that for you. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Out here, that's kind of sort of. The, the way, way we yeah, deal the with way it, things. Well, the city gobbled all that up. You can't breathe without a certificate from somebody that says you can breathe. Yeah, that you're qualified to do this. Yeah, qualified to do what? <laughs> you still yeah. have to do it to prove that you can do it. So a piece of paper representing you, what in the fuck is that? And you can beat those in court anyway. You can do shitty you know, work, and people can sue you for your shitty work and not get a judgment because whatever contract you signed, you, all the all the, those details were met. <laughs> it's, uh, it's all uh -huh, the details. Uh -huh. oh, and, Mary. you know, if you do shitty work and somebody wants to know if you're qualified for doing that, just hand them the toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? You can be granted a That's judgment. That's about all it's good for. Well, you can be granted a judgment, but who's going to collect it for you? Yeah. Then you got that problem because just because you got a judgment, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Now you got That's a judgment. That's where you need to have enforcers. You, yeah, exactly. So you hire the thugs. And, mm -hmm. the, thugs, and the thugs do their, their shit because they're thugs. And yeah. then when someone comes and says, hey, hey, <laughs> you hired thugs. Well, I may have hired them, but they didn't have to do it. They did it. They're, they're the bad guys. Yeah. They're the ones that wow. did it. Wow. Isn't that? See? It's blame, just, yeah. Let's blame the victim. That always works. It's a cycle, Jake. That's what it is. Well, I see the cops in their own, in a sense, as victims of the same game I'm a victim of. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, kind it's all of, part of beliving the part mm, you're supposed to be no, playing. Because it's all, you have. No, it's all part of me having a huge ego and believing that to be that desperate to make money, you have to be kind of slow. It's not I'm, it's not an envious position I'm in looking at this guy. I mean, he's he's got a gun and, you know, he rides around in a cop car that people want to blow up. <laughs> I don't know. That doesn't Yeah, like I would not want that job. No. no. No, it doesn't. But that's what I'm saying is that that doesn't appeal to me, but the people it appeals to. <laughs> Whoa. Please go away. Oh, I am busy. Oh. Yes. Yes. I would. I, I want a job that I can actually see the results right here, right now. And those around me are going, wow, that's cool. Or, whoa, you fucked that up. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah, but life is easier if you just make it on paper and never physically have to do anything. They call that owning a business. Juggling Ooh. paper. Yeah. It's really or being a Gooberman employee. Well, not even Gooberman. I mean, let's say that Oh, but I, they're trained professionals at juggling paper. Right. Well, let's say that I wanted to buy a quantity of something and make a label for it and sell it under my own name, blah, blah, blah. But I don't feel like sitting around doing the physical labor. Well, then I'd have the option of paying somebody else to do my physical labor. Ah. See, doesn't matter to yeah. me who does the damn labor. If if I don't want to, I'm going to find somebody that wants to. Yeah. Right. And, oh, wow, people have, I remember, came from people that wanted this to do. To accomplish that, it was life was like a like a chess game, I guess, in a sense. And knowing where the pieces worked and how they were, how they functioned, was a great advantage to have. So I didn't have to know but how the TV functioned; I had to know somebody else that did. Well, yeah. Right. Well, because a man that's busy with his own talent doesn't have his marketing skills might not be worth a shit. 
Might be a great electrician, but a lousy salesman. Well, yeah, and yeah, that's why sometimes people need other people to help them. Well, the system has stepped on us so badly now that you need permission to get permission to get permission. <laughs> raise your hand. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was in a restaurant the other day, and I had to raise my hand to go to the bathroom, just like in school. And when I uh -huh. asked that question at school, they told me not to be ridiculous. I said, well, why do we have to do it here? Because we said so. Uh, well, yeah. What? Yeah, because somebody said so. No, they were pretty clear about, no, I said so. I'm the one talking. You're the kid. You do the listening part. There's any speaking Yeah, but it's be always done. because somebody said so. It's just always Right, but like if there that. was ever any speaking to be done, and when I was in school, the grown-ups were going to do it all, all of it. You had less than no say in anything. No oh, saying yeah. something would have been a step up from where we were. And look at shit now. It's bad. I seen a link. I see the I don't know if it's true or not, but I seen a link <laughs> about a uh, a kid got arrested in some public school, I forget what state it was in, for not uh standing and doing the pledge of allegiance. <laughs> arrested. Yeah. Jail. Arrested. Hoy. These people know what they're fucking doing to these kids. Did and see that's the thing that really, really bothers me. I see all these people, you know, they and I've got to admit that fifteen years ago I was doing the same thing. But you know, so I can look back on this and go, Wow. Uh but look at the first line. I pledge allegiance to the flag. A piece of paper, or not cloth. paper, a piece of cloth. I pledge allegiance to a flag that's the colorful little piece of cloth that represents the United States of America. Oh, and to the republic for which it stands, which it hasn't been a republic in for freaking ever. It's never been one, ever. That's the whole point of the banking system. To remind you what you really are. Yeah. Because we've never, in my, our lifetime, okay, sure, sometimes in the past they're going to tell you that, oh, we were once for, nah, bullshit. I don't buy it. I think it's just more bullshit. I think the truth is, is the people that run shit now, their families always have, and the public gets bigger and stupider, and instead of stopping them, we pay for all the shit that it, they want us to pay for yeah and every once in a while they do a little shake up and reset the system and start over again i mean what would what would pepsi or coke do if, if 10 million people for one day didn't buy any <laughs> that would be interesting talk about the great wake up and it wouldn't take any fucking great thing. It was like, remember that baseball game I went nuts over because there was two million people gathered all at one time and the best that you chimpanzees could do was not kill each other. And I thought, well, there you go. There's an improvement. Uh, because I thought, wow, you got two million people. They're all listening to you. Tell them the truth about hemp. Straighten something out. Let's do something. And no, look, nobody killed anybody. Uh, they won a, a sports event. Oh, they're so and happy. Yet, that is an accomplishment to get that many people together and not have any violence go on. That is an accomplishment, and that's a vibration that gets sent out to the world. Unfortunately. <laughs> hey, unfortunately here comes the bad news. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Most of the time when you get, it's really sad when it becomes very newsworthy that a group of people got together and yeah. nobody beat anybody up. Yeah. That's a sad commentary on humanity. Yes, that's pretty much why I said that. What did you think? I didn't like the color of the wallpaper? No, no. I, I think more of people than people think of themselves. Well, I think people do just fine so long as they stay in smaller groups. True. 
See, that's what worked for me. I went all small group guy, and now I'm like, I'm as tame as the cat. <laughs> and he was a hell Speaking racer. of cats. Man, ooh, that cat was yeah. wild. Wild men cat. Mm, well, my rascal can be wild, but right now she's sitting on my lap doing her impersonation of the Sphinx. Uh-huh. Is that good or bad Sphinx? That's It's a good Sphinx because she's just sitting there, but... Okay. Yeah, she Whoa. was a little bit ago trying to give me hugs and grabbing the <laughs> microphone. <so. laughs> yeah. Well, since Cirque had the doctor fixed and he's all fixed and his whatever infection is cured, now he thinks he's a kitten again. Ah. Yeah. He feels good. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. The, yeah it's, all, it's to the point of annoying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fucking cat. That good, huh? Well. Okay, you know what I mean. What I've lived with this cat for four, almost four and a half years, give or take a few months, right? Mm-hmm. And the first four and almost three months, four years and three months, he was a docile. He went outside and did his cat crap out there. Now he does this cat crap in the house. You know, the playing, sleeping on tables. <laughs> yeah, Weird. yeah. Yeah, he didn't used to do that. He wanted to be away from the dog. Now he wants to spend more time with Anna. Uh, it's like having children with four legs. Yes, well, yes, it is. And yes, it is. They're just as bad. They say no to animals. They go, nah, I'm oh, yeah. listening to you. I'm having fun. Fuck off. Mm, and then what yeah, are you gonna pretty do? much. What are you going to do? You got a dog that doesn't listen. What, what hit it? No, that's stupid so you got a dog that runs your freaking life because you like animals <laughs> and yeah In yeah sense, pretty much because yeah, they're a lot pretty of much to keep them so that they're healthy and they're uh, clean and all that and be worth being around it's it's a lot of work it's not an easy job yeah and who's the master exactly i hate see and there's government right there. We got these fuckers right in our paw. Right in the paw of our paw. But we can't get enough of the population to understand that how you get your way with these people is not by giving them their way. <laughs> You're the customer. Figure it out. Yeah. Wow. See, they make sales easy because they don't know how to say no. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some hey. old timers on the Real Liberty Media that know how to say no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you ever talk to cool. some of those crazy fuckers? Oh, they're crazy people. They scare me. I need to call the <laughs> cops and get protection. What do you think? Call the cyber police. <laughs> the cyber police. Yeah, Woo! what's it coming to? Yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't think much of all that. People do what people do. Give them a break. It's not their fault. It's, you know, forgive them. They don't know what they're fucking doing. And the proof is in, have you ever seen anybody go out and order a Diet Coke? Whoa. Yeah. Well, yeah. there you go. That's just living proof. You don't know what's in, what you're drinking. And then the same person that drinks a Diet Coke will make a big deal out of a cigarette or a pipe or something smokable. Because of all or the, that you're eating McDonald's. Right, but because yeah. of all the, the bad press over the years. Mm-hmm. And all the exaggerations. Mm-hmm. And the, they got away with it. They pulled it off. People are terrified. So they pay these exorbitant taxes it's because what they're doing is going to kill them. So to purchase the thing, they're willing to pay a lot of a, more of an extreme premium to get it. <laughs> because well it's doing me damage and I'm going to get sick later and what no, no that's not true you know what's true though if you don't know what additives to use you could be missing out ooh you know it's like ooh. having a car no different if you run your car on crap what's your car going to run long it's going to run like shit but yeah. if you put the good fuel into the gas tank and you feed it and you keep it clean, clean the spark plugs once every once in a while, 
you know, that shitty shit that goes wrong with a car. Because it's, it's an oil design. It's going to get dirty. That's the point. Uh-huh. That's what they wanted. <laughs> We're so yep. suckered. Yeah, man. Yeah, and then me and you sound crazy because we go, hey, do you guys know what's going on? <laughs> You're being cornholed, and you seem to like Ooh. it. It's making me perspire. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> well, my mind goes, but if they like it, what am they going to do when they get bored of being the taker and they want to try it themselves? They're going to need a victim. No, oh. I don't want to be no science laboratory victim for this here society. It's too fucked up. These people are crazy, Mary. They're, they're capable of anything. Yeah. They have no remorse either. Give two fucks about what they do. I seen this guy, this link of uh, the guy in charge of the CDC in, information. or He's the most knowledgeable immunologist on the planet some crap mm. like that right yeah yeah so they get him on and, he, and this guy's really drilling him he's giving him a tough interview and he asks him how many live uh well he didn't say live he says how many fetuses have you used in your experiments and the suit and tie yeah he responds very quickly with two then the yeah. next question is, he says, well, were you part of this particular study and so-and-so and so-and-so? And, and he says, yep. And it, do you know how many uh, fetuses were used in that particular? Oh, no, I don't recall. <laughs> yeah. 72. <laughs> oh, was it that many? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's because they are not, they are a thing. Yeah. I was just being dramatical with all that crazy abortion crap stuff, you know, because it's not my area. I don't know. I'm not going to ever need one. So I don't feel I'm really in a place to decide for anybody. Only thing I could say is, whoa, I wouldn't want anybody doing that to me. That's it. Yeah. Figure out what me I'm talking about. You know, if my mom would have done that, guess you guys be listening to Mary and somebody else doing some other show because I wouldn't be here. That's true. That's true. So who? And that's you, that's who, what I tell you know. Anytime yeah. someone comes up to me and says I'm pro-choice, and I, you know, I'm pro-choice as well. I like to choose if I want to have a banana or an orange or a grapefruit or eggs or whatever. I like that whole choice thing. I mean, but when you like, start saying. It's pro-choice as in I can choose for my body. Yes, you can. You can choose to chug that Diet Coke. You can choose to eat that Mickey D burger. You can choose to eat that that crap. Yes, but ma'am. once you've got something living inside you, Uh-oh. should have made your choice before it spread your legs. Wow. Ooh, I didn't do anything to anybody. I was just walking I by. know, but, you know, that's, that's <laughs> the way I look at it. And then you know, they'll always go, well... That's taking away my choice, and you just took away the choice of something that's living. And stop and think: What if your mother made that choice? You wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be having this conversation. Wow, that Uh, would be a lot better for me. You were just on the dark table, and I brought up a touchy topic. Yeah, but I was trying to make the point of before you went on your tangent is I Mm -hmm. feel not particularly involved in getting an answer to that. my role in that is way different than the the female, so I think it's up to the female to decide what she wants to do with her own body. Period. I don't care who you know. It's got nothing to do with me. And if it has something to do with me, then I'm not going to be talking about it with strangers. And in, you know, I'm going to be doing something about it. Whatever something um, is. What? See, and I I feel as though. Someone brings up their opinion. I'm going to express mine. Yeah, so they go. opinions. That's wrong and I th- I that. think men I think men have just as much responsibility and right to make that decision as women do. Decision. And men should not be trying to be poking if they don't want to be responsible. Oh. Well, period. So you lose. Takes two to tango. Ah, bullshit. So you lose. You got a society full of individuals that want their own specific way at everybody mm-hmm. else's cost. Doesn't matter who you are. 
If you're a banker and you're making money, you're taking advantage of somebody. Yeah. Uh, if you're if you own real estate and you have rentors paying your mortgage so you can earn money off them, then you're taking advantage. That's how that works. That's what land ownership is really about. It's not about being your own man. It's about supporting some king. Yeah. Because no matter how small your bit of land is, you're paying rent to some king for your little bit of land. So just mm -hmm. the more land you got, the way it's supposed to be, the more you have is the more responsible you are. Well, what they've done is they've turned the more people you represent, the more responsible you are. Where's the money at? <laughs> kind of takes your mind off the fiat currency whole thing in the first place. Because if you don't play this game, we're going to put you in jail. That's right. Don't fuck with us. Look at Gibson. Yeah. Gibson. We have such a good idea that we have to force it upon you. But Gibson, they raided them with armed 50 armed car uh, people in cars. It was horrible. Yeah. I couldn't imagine that. I mean, because if, they didn't get their wood from the proper wood people. That, well, How much uh, wood would it get to them? Yeah, that was the same. Ex they used it on one company, but not another. So no, no, no. What it? What they? There was rumors about it being uh, he was supporting the wrong particular uh, political person, and it got the interest of the IRS. And the IRS is a bunch of greedy fucks that'll do anything that they want to do to anybody they want to do it to. <laughs> you cannot stop them. If the IRS targets you, you're gone. Yeah. So, and who of us has enough money for anything like that? They don't, they don't do that. And what's his name? Trump? Oh, he loves the asset forfeiture laws. Oh my goodness. Well... Until it happens to him, I think, is what's going to happen. You know, I hope somebody gets ballsy and steals his helicopter while it's flying somewhere. And takes him to Africa. And drops him off amongst a bunch of hungry pygmies. And he's forced to fight his way back to America and tell us how he survived. <laughs> oh, my. That would be epic, wouldn't it? That yeah. would be. I think if you're going to have a leader... If the guy like Putin and what's his name, Trump, these guys want to be called leaders and they want to lead us places. I think what they should do is do it naked with a spear and they got to be against each other. And then <laughs> whoever wins, they're 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 the leader <laughs> like a duel wow. with spears. Something wow. insane. Well, why would I f want to follow either of those two idiots? One is a thief, and the other is a murdering thief. And Trump's probably a murdering thief, too, but I don't know. He seems kind of swishy about his demeanor. He doesn't seem very like a deer hunter, kind of kill him guy. He seems more like a slap him on the back of the hand and run away guy. Mm. Like Obama. Obama was not a manly <sighs> motherfucker. Neither was George. But look at any of these fucking guys. Well, Kennedy was kind of for his his time in history. But before Kennedy, they were all a bunch of older guys that probably didn't have nothing better to do anyway. So try to shoot at me. I'm the POTUS now. <laughs> you know, I would absolutely hate that job. I mean, crime any Christmas, you have to do... Well, you, you have to do what? When you want to go somewhere, you have to ride in a vehicle that's that's like a freaking tank, only it looks yeah. like a car. Yeah, that's, you know, you, that, that's what ugh. doubles and stuff are for, Miss Mary. Talk a, Yeah, but talk about a mobile prison. Well, may, maybe not. This guy is a billionaire. We might not even know who Donald Trump is. This might have been a big performance for his whole appear, you know, the whole beginning to where he's at now. Look at the family he comes from. I just want to see him say, "You're fired." Oh, <laughs> well, I'd like to see him duke it out with Putin and just, you know, no, no um, holds barred, fight to the fucking death, something and just impressive as hell, and make him stop and go, "No, we're not going to do this." Well, then you don't. 
you, know, you don't rule or lead anyone then, you fucking idiot. But we've been conditioned with all these rules and civilized things. We fight each other for them. And I ain't fighting anybody for any fucking buddy. Except you know, Cirque, but Cirque doesn't draw that in her life. Yeah. No, everybody loves Cirque. Fuck, who's going to be mean to her? She's more mean to other people than they are to her in the long run. Because she'll, she'll defend the innocent side of something in a social Danish situation. Mm -hmm. Like uh, one day, I'll tell you a little, my tough little wife took on the, the security guard guy. Oh, wow. Well, the kid was rude to somebody, an uh, older woman. I might have the details a little fucked up, but the story is pretty close. But, yeah, the cop was mean to somebody. And Cirque stood up for the somebody and made the freaking guy responsible for what he pulled off. Because this is Denmark. Ooh. This ain't America. You abuse people in a suit around, you know, a costume or a badge, and the people will fuck with you about it. <laughs> this is a different world. Yeah. You know, speaking about ripping things off, did you know that um, Adam off. Schiff says that now we have reason to believe that Trump ripped the tag off his mattress in 1987? <laughs> Egad! That's oh, going to that be was, all over the news. That was weak. No, I I wonder if Trump's even Trump. Because his, his uncle was involved with the Tesla papers. All this stuff is too deep rooted to be happenstance and oh, I was never gonna run for president. Wait a minute. Well how do you happen to have an uncle that was the last person involved in handling the most important documents on earth at the time and you just happen to be the president in at this period of time hiding all this information from the public still. And yet, you know, people don't put the they don't put the puzzle together the way I do and look upon it and see the picture I see. They do it their own way. And uh, I just see a, hey. a lot of thieves and liars pulling the wool over the you know, the collective eye. Then and well says that, uh, you know, your whole Trumpel and Putin thing, he wants to see a trifecta of nutty Yahoo po uh, Trumpels and Putin in a death match. <laughs> there can only be one. Yeah, well, you know, America and Israel tired of they they're they're welded together. Where one bitch goes, the other goes. Doesn't matter. And that's because there's a golden string. But the chances you'll get uh you'll get Trump before you'll ever get nutty Yahoo. And these uh. fucking Jews, they got the damn support of the religious. These people are killing us all. It's really bad. The Jews got real nice laws coming up. Just wait till you see what the government has in store so that the Jews can get away with what they're doing. And if you should complain or question it, you'll be the problem, not them. Yeah, this whole, yeah, I, I put a bunch of squiggles on some parchment and now you have to do what I say. Really? What if I can't read your squiggles? Ignorance of the laws, no excuse. <laughs> Everything's illegal now. Jeez, it doesn't matter. I know. What isn't you illegal? You have the right to oh, remain you stupid. Have right. <laughs> mm. yeah. You have the right to not listen to me tell you that you're a moron if you think that is good. <laughs> I just can't. Are they a that. moron or are they a maroon? I, I guess don't it depends know. on where you put the emphasis. I'm not very nice, so I would probably think of them as morons. Mm, see, and I'm more colorful. I would call them a maroon. <laughs> well, it just comes down to the uh, individual thing. You know, I'm responsible for me. How I'm responsible for me is I'm not using the government to be responsible for me. That's how I do it. Find any other road besides some government bullshit to get done what I want to do. There you go. But. I do incorporate my talents with people that participate in the physical world. See? So, mm. you know, well, life is a balance because you always got to bring something to the table that you're sitting at eating or you wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't happen. 
Unless, of course, you're born into wealth, and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about us people that actually live a physical life scrounging over the 7% of the fiat that's left. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you, there have been times, and this people are not going to believe it, where I couldn't buy weed with cash. Cash was, nah, I don't want any of that. What else you got? What? <laughs> You don't want yeah. that. No, I don't want that shit. I want something worth something. What do you got? There you go. There you go. Yeah. Was Barber these, system. These things that when I was a, a young uh, runaway from home and all that, and people with, I just thought I was really short for my age because I didn't tell them how old I was. I just let them assume and agreed with whatever they said. The first thing they said, that's how old I was. Because I'm out there hitchhiking and shit. And I didn't want anybody calling the cops to protect me from people picking up hitchhikers. Yeah. Because uh, the way that my hitchhiking career ended for that year was such a mess. And it was really just innocent. I was just hitchhiking. The people that picked me up, they weren't so innocent. But they were good people. They were nice to me. But they were breaking a lot of the, you know, the civil laws. Ooh. And then uh, my parents were really cool about the whole thing. And I told them, no, I, they would give me a ride. They, I didn't even know them. So they got them out of any kind of uh, child problems they would have had. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. get more uh -huh. charges. The state wants to. Pro well, this is way back in the 72 or so. And the state didn't give a shit about stuff like that yet. But yet. they asked. Well, yeah, they couldn't they, find a way to profit from it. Right. Yet. Well, they hadn't worked on that. The finer details were still in the works. Yeah. But the attitude that they carried was more civilized. You know, I, I was still incarcerated and sent back to my parents and all that. But I wasn't treated badly by a bunch of thugs. I was just caught breaking the rules by an adult. Ah, and if I, man, I hate when that happens. If I had been a little quicker on my feet thinking, I could have got away with the whole thing and just left, but I didn't realize it till after the cop talked to me. Because I was you know, young. I didn't think. Yeah. So I'm headed Well, they to don't the, teach that in school. <laughs> I'm headed to the... That's what I keep doing. I'm in the parking lot walking towards the car. I probably had another... 15 or 20 feet to go to get to the trunk and the cop looked at me and said hey are you going to that car and I said yeah instead of no I should have said no and just kept going the other way but at the time I was 12 I wasn't that experienced yet I was still learning the ropes and mm -hmm. had I known yeah see there you go but even though they arrested me and I was part of this big thing it was a <laughs> cops everywhere it was so fucking dramatic and what the the people had done was they had eight pounds of weed in the trunk of the car, and then they dummies paid for the damn uh, hotel room with a, a credit card that was stolen. And ah. that was the, yeah. And because of me, it attracted more attention to them instead of not attracting. You know, they have this kid with them, so and it made them check the the card and call the cops. <laughs> There you go. Uh, but still, my big crime was being without parental you know, uh, supervision. and being, yes. But then I'm around these other adults, and they're being a bunch of boneheads. Break. They're young people, 20-odd years old. They weren't you know, much older than me, really. But they didn't do or say anything about it. You know, I didn't know they had all that. I thought they had a little bag in the front of the car. <laughs> it was like, wow, what the hell? And, and this is the kind of shenanigans I got into before I turned 13. So it was not an average uh, childhood <laughs> where things are all innocent and everything is rosy and peachy. You know? Yeah, I, I was the one that, that wore that label. Yeah, I did that for you so that you could have the <laughs> life that you had. I, I drew the short straw. Well, how do you mean? On being a, just a country bumpkin, innocent person? Yeah. Yeah, but that was your life. I don't... How do you not 
appreciate the life you had. It was yours. Oh, I, I truly appreciate the life I had. I Compared. think it was awesome. And, and it got me to where I am today. And I really like yeah. where I am today. So, oh, hey. yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to trade with anybody. That would be insane. My, my yeah. path's been, it's been full of weird experiences and a few disappointments. But overall, man, well, <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still rolling. See what happens. Like, you know what the big exciting thing I did today, Miss Mary? What's that? I went to town to get Cirque some yarn at the knitting store. <laughs> You're so awesome. <laughs> this, this, this is my big, and then I thought, well, it was a little early because I wanted to do radio and I got to do it an hour earlier, so things are different. So I thought, nah, I'm going to not go to and have a beer or two. I usually waste a little time at the pub on but today I wanted to get home and, you know, be in full pothead mode and be able to do the program. There you go. Oh, dang, Moose, he's colder than I am. Dang, Ouch. Moose. Hey, Moose is here. Hey, Moose. Yeah. Well, yeah, but she's been in that extreme winter for months and months and months. Yeah. So to, to hear that it's not over yet is, it's not good news. It's just not surprising. Eh, you know, and I look at it as, yeah, it's still not time. You know, I'm, I'm getting the urge to plant in the yard, but I know it's too early to yeah. plant in the yard. Oh, I was out on the porch today and Cirque was out there with a, just sitting out there in the sunshine and whatnot. But still, she didn't even say, hey, you want to start working on the garden? So I figured, nah, she's, she knows it's going to get cold again. <laughs> She just out there uh, enjoying what's available. Yeah, yeah, and I I got to do that the other day, but my and then my mom called that night and she said I've been out in the yard and I've been cleaning stuff up and I've been doing this and I've been doing that and I said Mom, you do realize that they're predicting snow for the weekend? <laughs> oh God, I hope not because oh, I just no. uncovered my tulips and oh, this and no. that. And it's like, oh man, Mom. Did you save her? No, I didn't, but, you know. Ooh, I you're think, a dirty girl. Oh, okay. Well, she's 90 miles away, darn it. Oh, I didn't know it was that far. Okay. Yeah. I, I got, yeah, it's been a long time. I forgot you moved, yeah. But she you does have, you know, she had things that she could put over so that they wouldn't get froze, so. But, yeah. And, you know, that's something for, for someone that's 88 years old. God dang, she outworks a lot of people my age. Yeah, well, that's common here. Lots of um, ancient bodies in Denmark, or this part of Denmark where I'm at. This, I call it like a retirement village. And then they get the teenagers, you know, from the younger folks doing all the labor. There you go. Well, yeah, it's a, how they get into the workforce. There's no real unemployment. These people, they've got a different system. The system encourages them to engage in an ed education and get a job, being, you know, living good instead of being like me, what I am, you know, an unskilled um, communicator. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It, yeah, on paper, oh, there's not nothing. Just, you're an untrained communicator. Oh, yeah, a tax man. Unskilled. A tax man that could look at my tax record would probably drop where is it there's nothing here <laughs> how'd you do that <laughs> yeah they're sneaky you must be no. doing something oh crying out loud yeah you don't start it's just like heroin if you don't start using heroin then you'll never use heroin but every once in a while somebody tries the shit and it hooks them they love that shit then they don't read anything about it find out how this does what to you. They're just doing something. Ah. Like driving a car. When you buy a car, you don't learn every part of the car and how everything works and this temperature. And that. No, most people don't know shit of what fluids go where and what part of the car to do what job. They don't know that. Yeah. Anything. How to change a fucking tire if it gets, you know, flat. What? Huh? I don't know any of that. I got a car. <laughs> yeah. See? Well, that's somebody else's job. I capitalized on that concept for a, my working career. 
There was always somebody that needed and always nobody around to do it for some reason. So you had to be crafty and find people because they couldn't meet. There was no neutral point for them to meet. Ooh, hey, guess what? W4DKV Whoa. is being a cyber telemarketer or tele-evangelist. Send me <laughs> your money. And when they let me into heaven, I'll put in a good word for you. Thank you, baby Jesus. How much does he want? I don't know. Uh, Rob Works wants a magic checkbook. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well. I still have checks. That means I have money, right? Grimner, I... Grimner's uh, making comment about my heroin point. And it's so deep-rooted in me about this needle thing, this inoculation. How did they get the public from fearing the needle? You know, marijuana is a gateway to heroin addiction. No, it's not. Are you nuts? Heroin addiction and is a gateway to heroin addiction. Most yeah. people will not even try heroin. They go, no, are you out of your mind? <laughs> so, it's going to be the fringe. Mm-hmm. Well, mm -hmm. now they're making it. They're making it so available and so strong they got a mortality rate. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they've got people used to being poked like a freaking pincushion, so what's one more poke? I don't know. That's what I mean. If you if you get inoculated and it doesn't maim or kill you and you grow up, well, where's your fear of needles? Yeah. Because I've seen people type and say the craziest things in the chat room about it. No, I got my kids all vaxxed up. Okay. Hmm. Wow. You know, one of the reasons yeah. I wasn't married when I met Cirque was because my second wife and me didn't see eye to eye with the state. And she was sided with the state against me about ah. the, yeah, the interference with the kids. And, hey, fuck these people. And no, the state, you have no idea how much power these fucking people think they have. And whether they got it or not, they destroy all the people around it to prove the point. And it works. It works really good. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Remember your kid's friend that got shot. Yeah. And what a threat he must have been to, to shoot him. Yeah, in the back. Why? I mean, why? Because he's because running he away. Because he wouldn't stop. Right, he wouldn't exactly. stop. But where's the opposition? Where's the other side of that coin in the chaser's mind? What if it was you? See, I was raised with that. That Maybe that's the part that's missing in the modern world is. Put yourself in the other guy's shoe and see <laughs> see what things look like, you know? Try it. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. I don't like that. I ain't going to do that. And that's what I do. Yep. Makes me pick the choices I choose. Or I'm not even so sure that that's the way that works. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, in one way you could say Cirque was a choice, but what if I would have picked Cirque, but Cirque didn't pick me back? Then what? Then you'd just be SOL and you wouldn't be with cycles then, and then you would be sad. Then that goes to show there's another answer to that particular question. Because it can't be maybe or partly or something. No, it's a definite something. What is it? And then I got involved with Larry Woods and started reading about the vibrations and the resonance and the, all these other th that are um, like... Like layers of life going on behind the uh -huh. back, like your heartbeat. You Maybe you can control your own heartbeat. I don't know. I've just been told all my life, the thing does this, it does it by itself. Eh, leave it alone. Let it do its job. Now, what if my brain waves, I could learn how to tap into them and go, hey, be uh, do everything <coughs> that you're supposed to do and do it right. That's an order from the brain. <laughs> yeah why couldn't that be it that is no more ridiculous than believing in a thing in the sky runs everything 
Yeah. Mm, you well, know, and I, I wonder if maybe, <coughs> excuse me, no. if maybe this, this <laughs> invisible guy in the sky yeah. thing, mm. when you stop and think that, and I do believe that some, someone, something, we don't have language to explain it. I really don't think we do, point. but that's Good my point. personal opinion. Yeah. Like but that. whatever started this, do you really, really think that if it's so powerful that it could create all of this, that it's going to pay attention to each and every one of us and, and watch what we're doing? No, it created this big old, it's got a, bigger things to deal with than just us we widow us or maybe and that's thing. why it gave the whole free will and the frequency and all built all that stuff into the system but people are always going to say i prayed to god and he didn't answer my prayers maybe maybe your prayer was answered it just wasn't an answer that you wanted maybe just maybe because i had this discussion with a young man at work actually while i was cleaning up the breakfast area he he just wanted to jabber and i said you know when you pray to god or whatever it is you pray to it always says yes when you say i want more money yes you do um when i when you say i would like to be happier yes you would it always says yes it's not gonna fix nothing it's just gonna say yes yes it's up to you to do the fixing as part of that free will thing, don't oh, you know? And let me let me take a moment to not upset anti, because I'm not denying that there's something. What I'm saying is, in our feeble attempts to explain and describe it, all we do is upset other people, or when other people do that, they upset us. So. I wonder, what's the point of bothering with any of it? To argue so that you'd be right. whoop de fucking do You're still using the same shitty electric electricity I'm using. So, where's your advantage? Yeah. You know, if you're going to put, put things in words like a belief system. I've heard you a million times. You don't have to tell me, Miss Mary. I know. This is what I'm yeah. agreeing with you about, is whatever I believe is real, it's real to me. So how can you be any different? That's the yeah. similarity I see in you is, well, just because I tell you something, well, you might look at it, but you'll you'll see it differently than me sometimes. Not all the time. So I give everybody that particular um, gift from me to them is to understand it how you like whatever turns you on and if it doesn't bitching at me isn't going to change the way i see it so don't don't waste your time yeah yeah there you well go. people aren't gonna it, yeah and i know i've said this a baz bazillion well, times a billion but people one. people are only gonna hear what they want to hear and they're only going to understand what they're capable of understanding at that time but if you just put that out there, then maybe, maybe, may, sometimes maybe isn't not even just because it's five letters instead of two, but maybe is a super humongo word gets used an awful lot. But maybe, just maybe, that little seed or breadcrumb that you drop, they'll go, wait a minute. Somebody said something umpteen gazillion years ago. And see, since you're flash somebody, I'm going to blame you. But, um, <laughs> somebody said something and wow now i see what they were talking about so you know maybe everybody's little frequency thing is just going on their own little plane and when you say something and they connect with it you they just kind of cross paths with your frequency you think maybe some like that because there there's times where you don't even need to speak to people they just recognize you for what you are. Yeah. It's not common. It's not like every 10 minutes or anything. But every now and again, you'll pass somebody and they just know. And you both know the other one knows. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, like the rock hound guy I, that I was getting my yarn from today. He speaks enough English. He's, you know, traveled to America, so he's got no problem with the English thing. Uh, but his his uh, exterior is different than his thinking. You know, he's a store owner. Yeah. He's a merchant. He does commerce, does all this stuff that, in a way, kind of seems like it goes against his, his nature because he spends most of his time making things. He's an artist, but uh -huh. he does all. He splits the business with his wife, and I guess between the two of them, one does this and the other does that, I assume. But it it just shows me more that, you know, when there's two of you to figure out what to do, it makes it easier, not more difficult. If the both of you listen to the other one, not one sided. Yes. Yeah. So my bringing up something to Cirque, then and she goes and does it. It's it's not necessarily because I brought it up, but she might have been thinking, "Hey, you know, I want to do this." And then I say it out loud, and she says, "You know, I want to do that." So, boom, then it happens. But until somebody verbally speaks and says it, nothing happens. Wonder what that's about. Mm -hmm. um, or is that too deep for your your um, you know squirrely little mind to deal with? <laughs> I don't know because I had my feet picked up off the floor, so I don't know how deep it is. Oh, I was only shooting a little bit. <laughs> wow. Don't be doing that in my house because then the dogs will get ideas. <laughs> Damn it. I know because we're all a pack. To a dog, you're a dog. Mm, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I thought about this the other day for, out of some strange reason. I don't know what it was. But I thought, I wonder what Hannah thinks I am. A funny looking dog. I, I just can't understand. How would a dog know how to tell the difference between one form of carbon and another? Besides smelling it to know it's different, but then in her little mind, what's different? I don't know. Well, have you ever noticed that when a dog smells you, they know who you are? Seeing you. Yeah. Some dogs don't see as good as other dogs. Yeah. But they got that nose. Hannah's got both. She goes to the window and moves the drapes out of the way to look into <laughs> the street to see who's walking by. And she's just tall enough. <laughs> you look in the window, you see this dog staring at you. It's funny. Yeah. It's very amusing. Bubba will go and open the door so that he can, <laughs> the inside door, yeah, so that he yeah. can look out and see the, I heard something go by. <laughs> but, but in, you know, we're people, right? And we're, we're taught really dangerous ideas like animal rights. Because people that are good to animals don't need to be preached at about animal rights. People that are True. fucked up to animals are the ones that need to be preached at or forced to. Instead, See, we've got the whole thing backward. Instead of teaching people when they're little, hey, this is how you handle animals and raise you with a love for them. They don't do that. That's not how things are done. Yeah, I was walking Hannah to go get Cirque the other night, and the mm -hmm. strangest thing, I passed a couple, and I knew, I just didn't think fast enough to pull her closer to me, but I knew the dog wanted to smell them, and I knew they were dog haters, and I didn't act fast enough, and Hannah went up behind the guy, and he got all nasty and dust his pants off, and you know, the whole performance, because we're out walking in a street where there's a freaking dog, if you're that mm -hmm. worried, walk on the, you know, go around the dog. Don't, dumbass. Don't. Or walk on the other side of the street. You know, it's like those well, people that come up to you when you're on the street and they go, eh, your cigarette stinks, <laughs> put it out. You were on the walk. other side of the street. You had to walk all the way across the street to tell me you couldn't even smell it till you got over here by me, you dumbass. Never had that happen. I have not had that happen to me, but I oh. have seen it happen. Wow. And when I did... Yeah. I started laughing. God, I oh. thought I was going to pee myself. I was laughing so hard. I and take a look I got at the, me and probably not. You know, I got anything. a dirty look from those people, and I said, "Seriously, you crossed the street to come over and tell this guy his cigarette stunk." 
Why didn't you stay on your side of the street, dumbass? Well, and then you're going to, then it opens up other individual cans of worm, right? Like smoking. Well, smoking bothers people if they're taught to be bothered by the smoking. Mm -hmm. My grandmother was a smoker. My folks, not so much. And I had been raised with that detest for cigarettes. But my grandma smoked. And when she'd smoke, I got a, just a, a mental something when she would light that matchstick and i smell the sulfur. I still mm -hmm. remember it in my mind. I have a f mental memory of a physical event. Mm -hmm. and, well... I was a little bit of a smart ass with my parents at an early age, and I didn't know when not to say things. <clears throat> so, somehow in my mind, I'd gotten all this negative over the years about how bad cigarettes were, and mm -hmm. you know, hearing all the grown ups say things. So, I answered the phone, and I thought I was being funny. I said, Hey, mom, grandma just died from smoking those nasty cigarettes. You were right. <laughs> I was kidding. She, my mom's dead. You what? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm joking around here. Talk to grandma. Then she <laughs> hit me with a broom. <laughs> it happens sometimes. Right. But see, I, in my little frame of mind at that age, I can only assume what I thought was being funny because everybody else hated the cigarettes. All right. Well, yeah. I'll hate them too. Sure, I'll be on the I hate cigarettes thing. And then once that happened, I didn't hate them anymore. <laughs> oh, there's just, mm, yeah. Well, you can't control what other people do. But you can control is how you understand what they do. True. That is true. Well, my folks yeah. were a little young, and I was their first experiment in child rearing. <laughs> they were new <laughs> at that shit. <laughs> Barely survived their own crap, so then they had me. It's like, wow, what the fuck were you guys thinking? Yeah. Right, but at the time, in the history, that's what people did. That was the normal way. But the living on the farm thing died with my father's generation. He moved off the farm. See, and that's that's what my farmer did. He moved off the farm, and now he's wanting to move back to the farm. And it's like, oh, right. dude. But see, like these, these financial manipulations done by the state to the citizen over the years have showed to be what they truly were. Yeah. Yeah. Because if education was supposed to be so much better in my father's day, why were they so incapable of helping him learn anything? They didn't teach him shit. He wasn't capable of learning what they were trying to teach him. Why? Possibly because it just didn't sit well with him. Well, I, Wrong I vibration. Say, well, his answer to it was, I wasn't himself. He would talk to me later on. He said, I wasn't young enough when I learned how to read. I was too old by that point. By the time I learned how to read, I was already behind everybody else. Apparently, he didn't start going to school till he was a little older than, he, he, than, I, than I was. But he taught me how to do this stuff before I started school. <laughs> so it kind of blew up in his face in a way. Well, yeah, because the brain does get set in certain patterns, and then, and they do say that it's the first first seven years definitely is when a child is most malleable and they learn the most. Right. So, but see, society gauges intelligence through this crappy, uh, ignorant paperwork nonsense and yeah. tests at school and shit like that. Well, my dad was not a, a, a Shakespeare or a you know, Weinstein, that fucking Jew idiot. Yeah. Or yeah, he wasn't book smart. No, no. But he could take a, he could listen to a damn engine and tell you what was wrong with it and be right almost to the point. You know, just go blah, 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 blah. How do you know? Ah, it's the way I, I can hear it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, well mm -hmm. there you go. And he had the hand-eye coordination to physically take it apart. And he tried to show me how to do this stuff, and I couldn't do it. 
I just was like, what? So it frustrated him that I was book smart, but I wasn't hand-eye coordination smart. That gift didn't come to me in that form. I got it in art, not in mechanics. <laughs> so Yeah. Yeah, so I poor me, I disappointed my poor daddy at a very early age. Oh, I don't think you necessarily disappointed him. It's oh, just yeah. one of oh, those. No, we, we discussed. He was very disappointed about it. Because he wanted me to, to learn all the things he knew. Because I was obviously such a good student at an early age. Learned to read and write before I was five. So when they uh -huh. sent me to school, you know, I, I guess he expected me to be good at everything I attempted. Not just certain things. And it disappointed him. You know, it was like, what did he, he was like, what did I do wrong so that you couldn't figure out how to do this stuff that to me is so simple, you know, but you can pick up a book and read it and I can't read that book. So who is to know? And that's but, the wonderful difference in people. Right. But the lesson it taught me was not to judge intelligence in the standard, normal ways of society that we've been taught to. It's bullshit. A lot of those people that have documents to prove they're brilliant are stupid oh i know an awful lot of really book smart people that are just freaking ignorant when it comes to everyday stuff anything else yeah they don't function in life but they function in society and that's strange how that works that it's like society isn't even really a part of life it's something we endure to do commerce Mm-hmm. Unless, you know, you got a black market thing going on or maybe a barter tr club or a trading thing. Yeah. It's like the Internet. It's just like the illusion of this uh, what uh, thing on Facebook that I'm always bitching about. How many more than 50 people am I going to have time to deal with? And it, 50 would be a lot. Yeah. Maybe five, ten thousand, a million, six million, a hundred million. You know, I mean, who in their right mind believes that anybody gives a shit what they say to Donald Trump? He's got a million people paying attention to him. He's not listening to you. You, you don't even have a voice. But to be caught up in that illusion of these people are doing things for us. Name one, one fucking thing that these suits and ties do. For us, and I'll show you that you're wrong. <laughs> and I think you know yeah. that from warring with me on the dork table over the years when we disagree. <laughs> what haven't I yeah. brought rain to? I mean, the police, the government, everything you learned before. I'm just, I've been along on the ride with you. So I, I saw you look at one thing one way once, and today you look at it differently. So I was bragging about knowing you for a long time in a sneaky, short of shitty way. Well, and that's, you know, that's that's the cool thing when you can look back and you and other people notice the changes. And I I think it's it's cool. I, every once in a while I'll look back and I go, "Wow. I really used to think that. Holy smokes." Sure. Well, I used to think it was important to win in a competition. I don't care anymore. Yeah. But man, yeah. I, it was so harsh to recognize it. It has been beaten into me beyond any kind of normal balance. So something had to give, and it was me. So I did. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I got married and settled my shit down, and now things are cool. But yep. I don't, I don't want to compete with people anymore. So I didn't really. See, how I look at it is my business, my reality, my belief, my whatever name you put to it, right? So it's all a matter of what I want it to be. So I make it what I want. There you go. Well, sometimes it takes a willing partner and other times like radio, I take a hostage. <laughs> <laughs> now it, oh, then and well just says he has a couple books on training dogs and the principles generally work. Honey, we don't train dogs. Dogs train us. It's just like it's with the, cats. It's, it's with any critter. No, it's the mentality of us. That's the point I try to make. Me and you, in a lot of ways, are very similar in strange, bizarre areas of life. 
like having crazy animals that live in your house, but not wanting to bully them around and make them dance for cookies. True. I don't True. know. Although mine do. When they come in the house now, yeah. it's they just automatically come over to my computer chair because right beside my computer chair is my big bucket of doggy treats. Okay. And so they'll come over and they'll sit. Yeah, but and they'll look at me like, Mommy, we were good. We came in the house. We tracked mud, but we were good. We came in the house and we sat down. Give us our treat now. And, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, I thought that I was starting out with, Oh, you did so good at going outside and doing your business outside. And when you came back in, here's a treat for being so good and not shitting in my house. Thank you so much. Now they've got me trained. So that every time they come in the house, whether they were out to go to the bathroom, whatever, <laughs> even if they track mud in the house, they sit down and they go, it's time for our treat now, mom. <laughs> who trained who? <laughs> well, right. But it takes a nut job like us to put up with an animal behaving that badly. People, Some people like living in order and structure and everything in its place and all that crap. And I don't. I I'm somewhere in the middle of it, you know, like if my in-laws are coming over, I want the house to look, uh, you know, neat. So I go out of my way to make it look neat, but sitting in it all the time, that's, you know, how people really are. I get to it later <laughs> and then you do it all in 20 minutes and do the cleaning up bit. But wow, I have that Felix Unger thing inside me where I want everything in a certain spot so I control it. My dork See, and side I want everything is... in a certain spot so that I know where I put it down. But that... <laughs> exactly. Well, there you go. And I'm blind, so you move it. Poor Cirque, she puts something down on the table and moves it three inches, and I can't see it anymore. It's gone. Where'd it go? And I'm looking right at it, but my brain is looking in the place it was, not where it is. It's like, a, uh -huh. it's like some kind of mental game I play with myself or something. But I don't know doesn't interfere with my daily life but it, it's it's like a nuisance eh something yeah you know, something uncomfortable that i do being a dork yeah but i still to this day i can light the smallest damn roach or spliff and not light my eyebrows on fire <laughs> see you have trained wow. yourself not to cause that kind of damage to yourself <laughs> And yeah, then and well, dog tracks aren't bad. And really, it's it's just one of those things where, well, I needed to vacuum anyway. <laughs> uh, right. But still, the, the difference between the, the totalitarian mind and the anarchist mind, that's kind of a way to recognize it. And it wouldn't work with everybody. I mean, it would be exceptions to the norm, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's how this works is there is no us. There is everybody else. You you might not even be here. Mentally, you could be right. <laughs> well, we're just a bunch of cars being run on shitty gas. So the waste... The waste is obvious. We all see that. We just don't recognize it that way. You know, one man's mistake is another man's profit. So, who made the mistake? Yeah. You know, and just yeah, that, mm. just imagine if the the fluoride thing was the hoax. That fluoride is actually really good for you after all these years and people were making up stories about it being a chemical byproduct of uh, manufacturing. No. <laughs> how, <laughs> how do you know? Hey, look, well, because if you look at the results, the results show you that with the people were telling you was not true therefore yeah yeah that's what was, oh i watched a thing on netflix last night something <laughs> about this fear it was a yeah. flat earth documentary is basically yeah. what it was yeah. and and uh, one of the guys mark Sargent, was saying that he had had all of these scientists that were you know like neil degrasse tyson and all that fun shit were telling him what an idiot he was because of math and because of perspective and because of this and because of that. And you just don't know science. And he said, no, I will admit, I do not know 
science. Right. But I do grasp what I can see. And what I can see is that when you tell me that this is supposed to be gone because of curvature, I'm, I should not be able to see this. And yet I get out my telephoto lens and I can still see it. I'm thinking I will trust my perceptions before I'll trust your BS science. Yeah, and, you know, is, I'm still I'm is still the point kind of, of all that. Though? What what is I I think it's to get I think it's to keep people arguing yeah, so that they confused. can't at least agree on the fundamental thing that no matter what it is we've been lied to. Yeah. Hey, oh, you have come so far in this game. I am so impressed. Cuz I remember when I had to kind of pitch you on, "Hey, Mary, I know what I'm talking about here." Oh, I don't think so. I'm not going to do what you think. And now, I wouldn't have to do that again because you would pick up on what was happening already. You wouldn't need mm -hmm. to be advised on it. Well, experience is a its a wonderful thing. Sometimes and even see, I, when it's yeah. shitty, it, like that. That was a, just a bad guy doing bad things to nice people. And I was the yeah. guy with my finger in the wall trying to warn everybody about the wall came coming is going to come down. Nobody wanted to hear it. You're just crying around nothing. Shut up. <laughs> well, you know, and that's, you know, that, that's like the whole reason that I even looked at any of the flat earth stuff was like, I got to see what the hell these crazy people are talking about. Yeah. And the more I listened, the more I went, son of a bitch. And then, then the little Acme light bulb went off and I went, okay, whether it's flat or not, I will never really know for myself. <laughs> No. Just because I will never go, you know, up high enough to be able to see for myself. But mm -hmm. I do know that I've been lied to by that somebody that's so, been yeah. taking a shitload of money yeah. out of my paycheck before I even get my paycheck. Yeah. And so, you know, that that was my clincher. And that's and like with, you know, some of the things that you shared to me and I would go. Oh, yeah, yeah, nut job, nut job. And then I'd start looking at it, and I'd go, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> and then I would get to the point where I just finally went, some bitch. I've been lied to. Some bitch. Now I'm to the point where any history book, I mean, I will read it for entertainment purposes, yeah, but go. not for factual value because any history book is still just someone's perspective on what was going on. I was not there to witness whatever happened. So I'm going to look at this as, yeah, that's your story and you can stick to it. I'll come over here and I'll formulate my story and I'll stick to it until I see something else that makes me go, wait a minute, I think I'm going to edit my story just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. How wee bit? Yeah. Are you a wee bit? I'm a wee bit person. Wee bit. <laughs> so did we cuss quite the... Did we cause quite the stir on the RealLibertyMedia.com chat today? Um, was, we had chatting going on. I see all kinds of people yes, talking. Yes, we did. Yeah. Well, I can't read and listen and talk. It's sad. Give up something. Usually the reading part. Uh, I'm limited yeah. in my old age, Miss Mary. Oh, Fatterif. Fatterif? Fat. It's not Fatterif. It's Fatterif. It says, I can't see the difference between jets spraying chemtrails and those carrying passengers or military jets. That's because there's no difference because they got that shit and everything. Just um, oh, bugs. Wisconsin won the Powerball. Bummer. That was supposed yeah, to be me. Day. Oh, wait. I, I, I needed to buy a ticket, didn't I? Sold shit. in Wisconsin. You don't live in Wisconsin. Crazy. Woman. No. Well, if I'd have bought a ticket, I'd have had a you chance. You should have asked Moose to buy you a <laughs> ticket. <laughs> You know, and then, hey, that's the best, what's that, a dollar a ticket or something, hundred dollars a ticket, whatever. It would have been the best $50 you ever spent. Because she'd mm. want to split it with you for going out and getting it for you, so she'd be entitled to half of what you get. There you go. Before taxes. I'm, I'm her Jew advisor. If this ever happens, Moose, we're going to skin Mary alive like a chicken wing. <laughs> <laughs> Thing. I like chicken wings. There'd be nothing left of Mary for Mary to be bothered with. We would just get it all, all of it. 
Okay, you just let me have enough to where I can. I just want to <laughs> dent to a couple of things, and then I don't give a shit with I don't the rest want of, any it. of it. You can have it all for all fat, I care. Fat turf, fat turf. Also, it's oh fat yeah, turf. for all you people that gamble and play lotteries, if you win it, I hope you get everything you got. I hope keep it all. I don't want none of it. It's, put some on Grimm's account for the, you know, Real Liberty Media, but I would never. <laughs> I would never do a podcast and want people to send me anything, ever. I do this for my entertainment. It makes me giggle. So, if yeah. you, you know, if you're out there and you support RLM, just send Grim some dough. Yeah. That would be, that, be the best yeah. thank you to me is if you sent him something and it said one of the crazy podcasts I put out, you know. Help him support yeah. the station. Yeah, support the that's the yeah Liberty Media. Keep Grim going so that the rest of us can play. Because Grim provided us with the playground. Yeah, so. he does. His, he always pulls his end. So he encourages me to to do my whatever my end is. You know, like I made it through a whole show without calling anybody adult. Go figure. I'm. Progressing. Adult. The medication is working very good. <laughs> be adult. I don't want to be adult. You be adult. <laughs> I don't want to be no stinking adult. I will be whatever I am. I am what I am. Oh, go, 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 I, go, go, go. I am what I am. Oh, well, flat earth. All ah, that stuff. Ah, flat, flat earth. Flat. Okay, I get it now. I get a little snow on the uptake. Yeah, but the, <laughs> The whole concept, one way or the other, whether it's round or flat, it's not the the answer is not the point. It's the fight about the answer that's the point. Yes. To keep yes, and that's off, what they want to keep going. Keep yes. you off balance, so that mm -hmm. you're defending or attacking something. You can't can't quite be a completely happy person if you're fighting a battle with somebody over some deep rooted belief system. Then you're you're off balance. You're in the fear mode. Ooh, I like Frisbee Universe. That would be cool. <laughs> hey, it's your universe. Who cares what... That's what I mean, Mary. Just because I say a few words about what I think of your life or your world, what the fuck difference does it make? You either allow it to make a difference or you don't. And it's just some words somebody telling you anyway. So... Hopefully they agree with you or they fluff you up. But if they don't, how can that possibly change the reality of how your life is? Yeah. You know, I mean, like, as far as I'm concerned, where I live, it's flat. <laughs> there you go. But see, there's people that are trained to ridicule you for discussing a possibility about something that they themselves individually cannot prove to you. They can't show you the proof. They can explain what they believe to you all day and all night, but if your mind doesn't accept it, like mine, then you're left at the end just wondering, well, I don't know, maybe it's neither, because certain uh, things apply to one realm and certain things apply to the other. But where's the, the similarities in the whole thing? Maybe that's the answers. Instead of all this arguing about, well, look at this difference and look at that difference, Maybe looking for the similarities would find the real answer to this because we're getting lied to about something. Well, the similarities is that we are wandering around here and we don't just fly off willy-nilly. And... Yeah. We do it mentally, though, all the time. Physically, maybe not. Of course, add some drugs or alcohol. <laughs> and human beings will you know, fuck a ham sandwich while they're trying to play a banjo. That takes some real coordination. And a lot of alcohol, but given enough <laughs> alcohol, a human being can be controlled to do the most insane things. It's a drug. It's just like any other drug, just like mm -hmm. every other drug we use. There you go. But see, Ooh, that, fat earth can show poof. The weirdest, so is it green fog? But Sorry. the weirdest thing about alcohol, it's the most controlling fucking addictive substance there is to drink. And it's the mm -hmm. thing that's legal. Out of all these crazy fucking things there are to do to get out of your mind, the one that's mm -hmm. legal is the most dangerous. Mm -hmm. There you go. 
Thanks mm-hmm. for joining me on a dork tip. We had some pontificating going on this week. You were very deep. I thought, yeah, Miss Mary's making up her mind. I like that in a woman. Ha ha. <laughs> I'm married to your buddy, so, you know, I can tell you I like you. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You wanna, that's fair. You want to do the lineup thing and say goodnight, Alice? To thank everybody for hanging out, and especially Grim for putting the, putting the dork table out wherever he puts it. Thank you very much, sir. And I yes. get you some notes soon. There you go. Yeah, and be sure to check back because tomorrow at noon will be Grimner with the Blues. That's noon Eastern time for those of you that are interested. And directly following him will be Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop ass on yo ass behind the woodshed. Um, Grim is on at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Monday with some leftovers. It's always tasty brain food. And then Flasher will be back next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Now, do you do this with uh, Vinny yet on It's a Playfit World? It it just depends. Vinny's hanging around on a Tuesday. Sometimes he wants to come on. Sometimes he doesn't. He's been strange. So well, he's no Vinny. Time. That's right. Vinny is equivalent to Strange. Just well, he's, saying. He's trying to put his attention on his own project and uh, leave the that's Tuesday awesome. to me. But well, he, he uses that as a reason not to do his own stuff. <laughs> so uh, it's a well, catch and too. That's his prerogative as well. I will be back with my rocket chair creaking and maybe even Putin on Wednesday (laughs) at 7 p.m. Eastern time. But until then, I will let you finish things out, Flasher Rooney Dork. Thanks, everybody, for Uh, letting me play. uh, Thursday night at uh, 1 p.m. on the East Coast. I or no, 2 p.m. I did change. I started it at midnight. I, I had to back it up. Time zones have me all screwed up. But it's an see, every show during the week is an hour later than the one before it. So I'd know what day it was. <laughs> so ah. Thursday, yeah. Sunday, Saturday is my noon show. Tuesday is my one show. And Thursday is my two o'clock show. Cool. But, but in my time. But in your time, that's what time it is. So. 20% off this Thursday at 2 in the East Coast in the PNM. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And I really appreciate it, Mary. I always have fun when I play with you on the dork table. But today we had a little pontificating to catch up on, I thought. And you made yeah. some really good points. I hope people listen to the things that you say to them. And all I want people to know about is I think it's all up to you. You're the one looking, so you figure it out. Tell me what you see. I don't know. Yep. I know what I see. Anyway, thanks, everybody. Yeah, we everybody. can't fix it for anybody else. It's not even anything for me to fix. It's just, uh, <laughs> later. I understand. <laughs> I know you do. Later.